my name is Sam Pockroy. I'm the founder and CEO of Sonari Capital. We're a growth stage private equity fund. Hi, I'm Morshmi Patel, uh, one of the partners, directors, and co-founder of Sonari Capital. So Sonari Capital invests in founder-run, owner-managed, and family-owned businesses. We are a majority woman-led and majority black-owned firm. Indeed, but not entirely on any one of those particular dimensions because we believe very much in diversity and promoting it not only in our own firm, but in our portfolio as well. So the journey has been long, Sam, 10 years. It was about six or so years ago that we discovered this so-called maxim about 10 years to overnight success. And I think we're probably glad we didn't know about it before. We might not have started the business back then. What was valuable about discovering that there is, it takes time, it takes patience, is that it gave us a little bit of freedom to actually enjoy the journey and not be so hard on ourselves and know that we were still going to make it. Definitely. And one of the most catalytic moments in our journey was having 27.4 as our partner. They set us on a trajectory um, and made us feel like there was, it was the first time that a proper institutional investor believed in us and our ability to do private equity. Not only did we believe in ourselves as a result of this, but others started to believe in us. Now we had this well-regarded, rigorous, institutional private equity investor who had literally made a commitment right at the outset of COVID when everyone else was taking pause on their investments. The additional thing that came along with 27.4 was having a warehouse vehicle that enabled us to do larger deals. It facilitated our ability to prove out our track record in the largest space. It enabled us to continue to do deals while we were trying to get other investors into the fund. So not only was it about the warehousing facility, but having an early anchor and an upfront commitment for our fund meant that we became much more referenceable. Uh, having such highly regarded investor investing in our firm, they were able to not only uh, refer us, but actually be able to recommend us. And that was based on the experience that they got from working with us with the warehousing vehicle throughout that process. I think for us, where they became really helpful was around preparing us for an institutional investor. They bought through the rigors of ESG, reporting, helped us on the fund formation. Absolutely. There were so many things that I didn't know before. So even though we'd done so many investments and we'd run other funds, it was a completely different level to running an institutional grade fund. And that was always our goal. That was always the plan. Um, we had to invest uh, ahead of having the AUM in place, but it was very much around getting to this point and holding ourselves to the highest possible standard. And I think that that was actually one of the nicest parts about the team that we work with at 27.4 is that there's this mutual understanding that it's okay to be hard on us, on each other, to really hold us to this very high standard because it's, it's made us better. Made us better. That actually in itself was helping us to prepare for the other investors who were going to be coming down the track who also had high expectations. The Fundo Forward initiative is really important. And for the reason is that the landscape is still very much pale male. Um, in order to change the landscape, we need initiatives like this. The journey is long and the opportunity cost for individuals is a lot. And so working capital funding is imperative to enable someone to sustain the journey and to make sure that they're successful at the end of it. Building a business is meant to be hard. We know that. We tell our entrepreneurs that too. But it's not meant to be this hard. Getting a working capital facility, something that we had the opportunity to do five years ago now, really enabled us to be able to build out a team that Again, we could invest ahead of the time, we could prove ourselves, we could show investors the value that we were going to bring. And we would never have been able to do that without the working capital facility. Definitely. In all likelihood, we would have just spent 
those past five years treading more water and not necessarily have gotten to a point of being able to close on a 1.25 billion rand fund. No, definitely. And I'm, I'm so excited by this, this initiative. I think it's going to change the landscape. It's just going to bring up women. Um, and as much as they're going to be our competitors, I look forward to it. Absolutely. We need to be successful as part of having been supported in these programs because the more successful we are, the greater support there is for more of these programs and supporting more diverse fund managers, emerging managers, managers that are planning to, to change things up a little bit in, in, in this world of private equity. Not only are our children watching, but we are paving the way for the future generation of women fund managers. And so it is really important that we succeed. Yes, it is our responsibility and everyone's responsibility. It's important that programs like Fund Her Forward are in the market. We're extremely excited about the prospects that Fund Her Forward and 274's commitment to this market brings. And we have every confidence that we're going to see more and more emerging managers, diverse managers coming to the fore and really building the kind of momentum that sees us changing the complexion of not only the private equity landscape, but all of the investments that we fund through our investment programs. And we are very excited to partner with 274 in our own business, but also in the Fund Her Forward program.